context, um, whether it's about computers or whether it's about people, all those things matter. And in trying to do this work, that's part of what I've been trying to assess, is to identify what it means for you, how does that relate to a larger group or a larger cluster of ideas. And it's been complicated, it's been complex, and you're asking a very good question. How you define hacker gets at the point of what is it exactly that's going on. If women don't define hacking in a malicious context, but have another term for it, then what are they doing? Do they define themselves as such and otherwise? So that's essentially the process that I've been going through. In doing my research, there were very few women. So I've tried to identify some, tried to ask specific questions, not only of, of women, but of men. So it's a curious question. Do they experience things differently? What happens in the context of becoming a hacker, however you define it? What happens when you're involved in hacker culture? Do you experience things in a negative way? Are you harassed more if you are a woman? Are you given some sort of automatic bias that, oh, hey, you've got boobs, you can't know what you're doing? Something like God that. God forbid the month I dive my hair So yeah, so there's interesting questions that we can ask. And when we think about it, based on computer science, that kind of thing. When we consider what's going on, the number of women who are pursuing computer science or technical degrees is relatively small. It's grown a little bit, and we're talking like 25%, something like that. It's still a very small proportion of the total number of individuals seeking degrees. So it's small, and in fact it had a decline at some point into the late 90s and early 2000s. It's starting to grow a little bit. But, at the outset, there's automatically some sort of a variation in terms of the number of people participating. Furthermore, women are getting involved in technical occupations. But, there is some very, very interesting variation here. For example, how many of you could guess the number of women who are dental hygienists? What's the percentage of women who are in that field? 80%. 80%? 95%. 95%? Ratchet it up a little bit more than that. That's 97 and a half or something. It's right it's around 97, far. 98, 99, depending Jeez. on the years. So that is a field dominated by women. But turn. <laughs> so yeah, imagine being a man and trying to get in that racket. What kinds of obstacles would you face? It's the same kind of thing we're just turning it on its ear. What's happening to women who are trying to get into this relatively at least from what we understand as being a male-dominated field. But look, look, look at both of those examples here. Would the the flack come from the, uh, say if I wanted to go into a you know, hygienist, would the flack come from the women in the field or would it come from my buds <laughs> making fun of me as opposed to the <laughs> hacker community? You know, where's the flack coming from? Is it coming from the girlfriends? Is it coming from? Right. The, you know, Right, and that's a very valid question. And if you think about it, are the women who get into hacking, are they going to experience differential treatment by their friends, by their peer group? I work in the healthcare industry, and when I'm on site, I see very few male nurses, for example. And I always like to talk to them about you know, their minority role in a very female-dominated industry. And they're not all gay. True. It's the opposite. It is the opposite. They're, and they're dirty. They're dirty, flirty. They are. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like. I don't like to stereotype. I don't like to overgeneralize. But the major. I would say ninety percent of the male nurses that I have met. One of the reasons they chose that field they was access to chloroform. <laughs> Anybody seen Kill Bill? <laughs> My name is Buck. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, uh, part of it may be institutionalized too. I mean, we, it, it gets to the point where so it's been so dominated by men for so long that when someone, for example, someone IMs you with a with a with a screen name or something like that that you can't see, you just assume that they're male. So a big part of that is assumption. And it's institutionalized. So. But when you hear the word nurse, you think, well, Right, right. So 97% of dental hygienists are female. So when you go to buy dental hygienist equipment, how much of that is geared toward women since that's the predominant market to begin with? Little tiny hands. I can count my number of female hacker friends on one hand and the fingers on the other Okay. So they're a very small percentage of your total overall friendship group. That is the number of women hackers who are friends of yours. Okay. Is that just because you don't get along with other women? <laughs> What about what about the men in your in your friendship group? 
most of my friends are male. Okay. In and out of the group, most of my friends are male. Okay. There are four girls in my networking department. My you were talking earlier people. about. You were talking earlier about how um, there's maybe harassment or, or grief that people of uh, opposite gender take when they go on a gender dominated field. But how much of that harassment is is uh, fear of being harassed versus actual harassment? So you're asking how many women are just how thinking many, it's going to happen versus how often it happens? If you could pose the question to the women in the audience who have who has been harassed or has felt like they've been treated differently because of this. IRC. Yeah, I was going to say IRC, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, we're gaming, all my gaming. Yeah. Yeah. More chicks gate things up. You know how many times I've heard that? <laughs> we, don't want, we don't want chicks on our party. You know, everyone's okay with Al, I'm going to gay things up. Right. <laughs> I don't think a lot of chicks would gay them. I'm actively trying to sodomize them, but she's going to gay it up. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, it's just going to... You're getting your exercise. Yeah. We'll make you into one of those skinny hackers yet. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that, Al. <laughs> but you know, you saying yeah, that right it's, it's it's generalized and you know it's mostly male. We have to kind of look at it. Who's getting the job back in the fifties? I mean, and before that, thousands of years, males. I had to say that, and I might be shot down because I am a male. Yeah, you know? but it's the truth, and you, you I mean you you can only face it. You can't deny the history that males have always been more dominant in history than females. And he takes out the code. <laughs> but I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you just can't generalize, and you have to look at that before you just start shooting on the males. Ayo, and it's kind of just how humans are. We're traditionalized. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with changing it. Right. Amen. I'm not, I'm not saying there yeah. is. And that's and that's part of it. Is that I'm not here to necessarily say there's something wrong with what's going on. That hacker culture is somehow unfair and needs to be completely changed. That there is some tacit issue at play that you all need to resolve. Rather, just what is the issue on the surface? So you're like Fox News, completely unbiased. You just report and we decide. Exactly. And, and I, I mean that in the most honest sense of the word. I can just present you with the ideas that have been thrown out there. If we think about the fields themselves, traditionally male dominated, if you think about the number of women who are currently employed as computer scientists, there's some variation here. Three out of ten, computer systems analysts. Very small percentage. They're even making less money than men. If we look at a very handy dandy chart here, this is the number of employed computer systems analysts, male versus female. So that's quite an interesting and broad gap, especially towards the end. So there's something at play. Obviously, the number of women are increasing. Great. So is the number of men. So that means women are getting into this career at least a little bit more often. I think maybe you're kind of ignoring a few factors as to why these women are paid less than men. Now I'll give you an example. I spoke with a woman, young woman a couple years ago at Hope who turned their women in hacking uh, for kind of sort into male bashing. And one of her problems was she knew she was getting paid less than her male coworkers. And I asked her, when you were offered the position, did you negotiate for your salary, or did you just take what was offered? And that pretty much ended the conversation there. There may be other factors to this than just, well, you know, you're a woman and you can't do what a man can do. Most guys here, you know, if you say that, they're gonna laugh at you. Um, you know, so I think, and you also need to look at, do women expect this kind of harassment when you step into this field. In other words, you know, Heather here, I have known her for a while. She's kind of high strung about stuff. She's going to piss her off. Well, so, that's because I walked into workplaces to apply for a job, and I knew that there was no women that worked there, and I applied, and I watched. As I walked out the door, the guy filed my resume right in the circular file on the floor, right in the garbage can. Didn't even look at it, just plunked it in. But do you expect that everywhere you go? I've had it at three different places. 
And you expect that every place you go. Okay, so based on history, yes. Do you think it's because you're a woman or because you thought you sucked? I asked. I asked the guy once, and he said he did not want a woman in the workplace because it would screw up an all-male factor. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, so I didn't say that's. It. So there you go. There's something something going on. Now I'm not really so much concerned with how much money are people making. Why is there a difference in in salary? But it's just something to draw attention to. So I had him fired. I noticed that uh, I go into a lot of different environments. I noticed that if it's a stable environment, there's a lot more women there than if it's a very volatile environment. I'm not trying to, you know, kind of but if it's a if it's a very competitive situation, then there tends to be a lot more males. But if you go something like a, like a, a, a clothing store or something like that, where they have mean frames or something like that, you'll see a lot more women. And, and I actually enjoy working with women that you feel better than because they're, they're no, I mean, seriously, they're not, they're not, uh, they don't have such machismo and things like that. But I, I think if the, if, if in a fast-paced moving environment where there's a lot of risk taking, you're not going to find women versus a place where you know I've been working on a mean frame for 30 years, you're going to see a lot more women in that kind of situation. So I think what becomes readily apparent as we're going through this stuff is that there are a fire hydrant man. <laughs> is that this is something that has a strong opinion base on one side or the other. Everybody knows something about it. Everybody's got something to say, and that's great. I've been going to forums for a little while now. I've been looking all over the place. These discussions are rare, and when they come up, it is very much like uncapping a fire hydrant. People get very pissed off very easily, whether they're on one side or the other, because everybody's got an opinion, and we all know the I old sure saying about opinion sometimes. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that there is some kind of a variation present in terms of employment, in terms of the number of women who are pursuing these degrees in the first place. When we take that and apply it specifically towards hacking, makes sense that, you know, okay, maybe there's less women pursuing computer science degrees. Do you need a computer science degree to become a hacker? No. No. Do you need any kind of formal training? No, not really. So then, by that logic, by that definition, even if you're, even if the way that you define hacking involves nothing malicious, is simply, I want to understand how this box works at its most basic level, then at that rate, you don't need any kind of degree. You could be a woman just as easily as a man and get into this. When we look at the academic research on computer hackers, and even some of the media research by reporters, the computer underground, for whatever reason, is male-dominated. In fact, there are some authors from my line of research, sociology and criminology, that say that male dominance is a key component of hacker culture. If you want to try to break it down to its most specific levels, like what is hacking all about? Is it about knowledge? Is it about some kind of problem? Yeah. yeah. Did you guys hear me at all? Yeah. 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 Okay. Just, just Keep bellow, that word. Well then fine. So, <laughs> screw the mic. At that rate, if it's male dominant, if as one researcher put it, puts it, hacker culture is like boy culture, where everybody is out there to beat on one another, to say, look how strong I am, look how tough I am, then maybe that's why women are not involved. <laughs> Could be. When you look at reporters who are trying to understand this issue, very few women have been identified. When they are, it's not hard and fast numbers. As one guy put it, Bruce Sterling, those of you who've read The Hacker Crackdown, his discussion or comment was that hacking is a teenage male voyeur thrill power trip activity. You don't find female computer intruders any more than you would find female voyeurs who are obsessed with catching glimpses of men's underwear. Okay. So that's one person's opinion. If we can't find hard and fast numbers about women, there are a few that say they're growing and they're on the white hat side. Okay, where's the hard proof? If we ask the question, who are the well-known hackers? Throw out some names. Susan Thunder. Midnick. Susan Thunder. Excellent example. Hooker. Who is Susan Thunder? The one who brought down Kevin Mitnick. The one who brought down Mitnick. And yes, apparently she was a prostitute at one point in her life. Now she's a professional gambler. At many points. Okay. Who knows who Carmen Karanzik is? Or pardon me, Karasik. 
I'll let everybody else go because I know it. Well, <laughs> anybody? Put my hand up. Let's not go ahead. Another famous female hacker. But she was later on, well after Susan Thunder, maybe about eight years, seven years. Do you remember what she did? No, I don't remember exactly. Anybody heard of Floodnet? <clears throat> no? Anybody heard about the Zapatistas attacking government systems, putting up messages about human rights? <laughs> yes. Okay. She created a tool along with the Electronic Disturbance Theater, if I'm quoting her name correctly, and their whole mission was to try to develop tools to help along human rights and sort of artistic <laughs> applications of technology. That's what they called it. They called it uh, arti something artistic. Uh, or what? Something art. Give me a second. Yeah, it was, uh, something art. It was called uh, not conservative art. It was called I don't contemporary. Remember. Something along those lines. Uh, I'm stumped, but I am on it. Something along those lines. It was called contemporary art. Contemporary art. That's what she called it. Lines. Contemporary art. Yeah, something along those lines. Yes, and in fact, much of what they did could probably be considered illegal. However, she says this was not hacking. This was art. This right. Was she defaced their websites. Is what she did. And then when they tried to prosecute, she said she wasn't debasing it, it was contemporary art. <laughs> so, very interesting. Very interesting, yeah. Linux chips. Anybody, anybody involved in Linux chips? He being <laughs> Open source. What do you mean by in? In, yeah. Okay. Is anybody involved with a Linux chips group? Anybody even heard of Linux chips before? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, two, three. How many of you are running Linux in one capacity or another? <laughs> All right, well, there you go. That makes play part of it. We tried to have a Linux service in our college, but we got ruled out. Why did it get ruled out? Because the guys <laughs> took it over and became the Penn College Linux Club. And it's, there is one female member okay. out of 113 guys. So, in a way, women got pushed out of even being involved in something like this. Okay. I turned around and made my... I, I came up with a DEF CON group for my area. Now see, that's a very interesting point, because even in the open source community, there are people who argue that it is very gender biased, emphasizing males to the point where some women are being pushed out. I took a look at the number of females heading DEF CON groups. There's four of them, and I'm one of them. Nice. Out of how many groups? So you are very much in a minority. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't matter. I can't walk up to someone and say, yeah, just because you're a guy, you don't know more than I do here. You know, let's swap stuff. Okay. Let's talk about it. Can you not hear? Is that the problem? What, where, no, where's, where's the BSD girl? <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> the BSD girl. Oh, the girl. Devil, we're, we're not touching. Oh, oh, oh. We don't want to touch it. It was based off of the Betty Page. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I was going to say, anybody running cervix? Cervix okay. and Deviant are both named uh, from women. <laughs> there you go. So. These are just three women, or at least two women in a uh, women's group. Now when you go online and you try to look up famous hackers, what are you invariably going to get? You're going to get Mitnick, you're going to get all those famous men throughout the line. There are very few women. When we ask the question, when academics at least ask the question, why are there so few women hackers? What is the gender gap all about? Some have suggested psychosexual theories, wherein Hacking is a way for young men, young boys, who are sort of socially inept, to dominate others, to penetrate something that they <laughs> And I realized, oh yeah, that's, that's really hilarious, but they're serious. There is an actual kind of notion that this is displacement for Whatever you're looking for. <laughs> is, is it true the number one uh, uh, classifications of sites that get hacked are porn, yep. or porn sites? I don't actually know in terms of sites that get hacked more often than others. I, I couldn't tell you. Because I'm told the BSD is, is the preferred uh, OS because it's very secure of porn sites. And also porn sites are the number one hacked site out there. Well, I mean, if we think about porn, it'll be interesting to look at the results of that survey, since I do ask you all how often yeah. do you look at porn online. Uh, when I ask this question to college students, I've done this so far with a sample of about 167. And it appears as though women are looking at it just as heavily as men yeah. at the high level. <laughs> now, that's not to say that women are just as often looking at porn as men, but at that top level where we're talking 10 or more times in the past period of time. 
women are just as heavily involved in that as men. At the lower levels where it's two or three or four or five, that's where it's more male-oriented. But there's a few hardcore female porn freaks out there. I, I, had, to, I had to add an extra level. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you corrected Terabytes. Shoot <laughs> Terabytes. <laughs> when, we, when we push it even further, this whole idea of hackers as being the, the nerdy, skinny, scrawny kid in front of the system. Anybody ever seen undergrads and like that show? Oh man, bad example then. Yeah. Right, well, just think about any recent movie where there's been a computer hacker in it, like The Core, or uh, yes. or uh, what's that other one? Oh, yeah. The Italian Job. Now Seth Green plays a very nice, big, nerdy kid in there. So, that whole notion, that, that further perpetuation of the hacker is the guy who can't talk to anybody else but a system, then... If they can't get girls, they can knock a system. In fact, an attorney for Ehud Tenenbaum. Anybody know who Ehud Tenenbaum is? No? This guy who was arrested for doing a number of different hacking jobs here in the U.S. He was an Israeli. And his attorney said, in the past we used to boast about the girls we had. Nowadays kids boast about their ability to hack computer systems. So there's, trying, there's individuals who are trying to link this whole notion of dominance to sexual domination of a system. Whether or not this is effective is hard to say because nobody's actually tried to test these theories out, or at least the validity of a psychosexual theory of hacking. So then would we assume that women who are hackers are sexually dominant women? Good yes, and that's why Just Susan, throwing that out there. That's why she you know? under turned in Kevin Mintick because Louis Dupin refused to sleep with her. Right. So right. she turned him in because of that. So yeah, she was a very dominant yeah. person. Yeah. Now, that's a very, very good question, and that's part of why I'm here, is because you all, as individuals involved in hacker culture to one extent or another, are the ones who are at the ground level experiencing this. You're the ones who can generate the best kinds of questions. We academics who are separated from it, whether by default or our desire to get in being shut out, we don't necessarily know. We can sit up here in our ivory tower, if you like that example, and pontificate all day about what's really going on. You with fancy words. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like them five dollar words. But whether that's actually the case or not is entirely a question. We talk about gender role socialization, wherein there are certain roles that women are expected to fill relative to men. Some people argue that technology as a whole is male dominant. It's cold. It's analytical. It requires skill to be operated and nothing else. There's no emotion at play. When we think about men, at least when theorists talk about men, the things that come into play are confidence, assertiveness, dominance. All of what you have to do in some cases to make a system work. We would argue, on the other hand, that women are more sensitive, more emotional. The matronly or motherly instincts, that's what some people would argue. So as a consequence, Researchers argue that women, if they're going to hack, are going to have different skill sets. Maybe they're going to be white hats versus black hats. Maybe there's going to be hard mastery versus soft mastery. Anybody ever read the work of Sherry Turkle? No? Okay. Turkle suggests that men are going to be involved in hard dominance, or hard mastery, where it's imposition of will after a planned strategy, more or less like hammering a nail into a wall. You could use a sledgehammer, or you could use a tack hammer. One way or the other, you're getting that damn nail in the wall. <laughs> Women, on the other hand, are going to be more involved in sort of free-form activities, more open discussion and ways to figure out how to do something. How many of you, since most of you are men, would say, yes, I'm very much a hard mastery kind of person. It's all about getting that thing in there, one way or the other. Now, I'm not talking about sex. No. That's on the way. Never mind. <laughs> but you really can't do anything because there definitely is, just like that, there definitely is an impact between the one and the other. Just like that says, especially starting off early 80s, where it wasn't as socially acceptable to be in the computers like it is today. So today, saying you're a hacker, even though you're dubbing it yourself, it's supposed to promote yourself, push yourself up. People like that. Where back then, if you sat behind a computer all those hours a day trying to do things, 
you obviously you didn't have the friends, so the computer was your friend. So that's definitely dead on accurate. Okay. So Turkle may have some relevance, but as time changes and technology becomes much more acceptable, as almost everybody's got a system, even where your younger brothers and sisters maybe are playing video games all the time. We know from statistics that the number of women gamers is increasing at all ages. So at the very least, that's a baseline sort of technology that's easy to access. If that's the case, then perhaps that potential technology barrier, the relevance of women not playing on a computer, whereas it may be more for your young boys, maybe that's going on. What were you going to say? Where I, where I work and, and doing what I do for a living, I'm an information security consultant. Both of those methods, like though, are equally valid and acceptable ways of doing what we do. I know, you know, penetration testing, for example, you know, may take the specific bang your head on the wall attitude, where you just bang, bang, bang until you get in. Or, you know, there's there's also kind of the artistic finesse approach to things, but both are equally acceptable and both equally work. So I don't know that that would really in, encourage a gap in successfulness in genders. Where I, I certainly agree that one is kind of geared more toward male, one tends to be geared more toward female. But I think in the, in the higher in the hierarchy of things, I don't think it really would make a stopping point. Now that's a very good point because most of the men I've talked to have suggested that there is not one single way to do that. So I don't know that the hard mastery versus soft mastery is so relevant anymore because you can very easily do one, the other, both, whatever it takes to get what you need to get done. Done. Now there are also structural arguments that have been posed. Essentially that women have had historically more difficult ways to get into the workplace. When they are in, they can very easily be forced out. Think about World War II. Who went into the factories when the men went overseas? Rosie. Rita the Riveter. Oh, was it Rosie? Rosie, Rosie. 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 We can do it, by God. <laughs> Thank you, Rosie. Once the men came back home, though, what happened to the women? Back, back in the kitchen. Yep. Where they belong. Pregnant, barefoot. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, that having been said, that's a very interesting point because if women were forced out of the factories once men were back, those kinds of opportunities dissipated. So there is variation in terms of the ways that women can get into these jobs. Underrepresentation in computer science, technology, all of those jobs, if that persists, then if women are never in it, women are never in it. It's just kind of a long-term cycle. The reverse happened with the beginning of freaking. And whereas the phone company hired young males, college, coming out of high school, etc., they were pulling too many pranks. Women are more reliable and more secure. They so reversed it, and that's how phone operators became women instead of men. Right. In the so women days. dominates the phone industry. So that is an interesting point. And Keith, were you going to say something? Um, I was just going to say, I think it all comes back to exposure and not in the dirty way. Um, you know, like um, Hoop was saying earlier, you know, we traditionally, historically, whatever, we, we didn't get the exposure, and more and more women are getting exposed to it. Like, you know, the only reason I got into 2600 was through a friend, a male friend, because I hang around with predominantly males, and I've told some of my female friends, you know, an HL6 friends, an HL6, um, but I think slowly that that exposure will increase, and I think that's a really big part, is just hearing about it and figuring, like, I have an arts degree, you know, I, I got a, I, I took sketching and I took all kinds of very bright brain stuff, ultra school, but in the meantime, my roommate, my male roommate, had a computer and I was a mutter, and um, a mutter? it's exposure, again, we're, old. we're not going to talk about <laughs> So exposure, and that right. may be something to think about, maybe in the future there's going to be somewhat less of a gender gap just at the outset, because the exposure of will catch up. introduction to technology, okay. Now, these arguments haven't been proved out one way or the other. These are just the ideas that have been proffered. Now, when we think about women generally who have been involved in this, even the female researchers who have looked at the issue, they argue that they experience a lot of harassment. This is a post that was on uh, Bug Track and, I can't even remember where else now, uh, infoseclists.org. Anybody know Starla Pureheart? Anybody heard that name before? Raise your hand if yes. Al, who is Starla Pierhart? That's recent, Al. I, there's no sex limitations. I, don't say who you know. Don't say who you know. I can't say anything. That post was 2004, dude. All right, so anyway, Starla Pierhart is a white hat hacker. This post was made, and it is essentially, I don't know if you can read it, 
At Bug Track Security Systems, we pride ourselves in having taken a keen eye for young and upcoming talent. Specifically, core members of our research and development team have expressed continuously growing feelings of affection towards your person. Or as one of our researchers put it, he, 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 I'd like to research and develop that all night long. <laughs> smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. What it boils down to is that we at BSS, Bug Track Security Systems, would like to offer you, Starla Pureheart, prolific warrior princess of the great nuke wars of 1997, a position at Bug Track Security Systems, preferably on your knees. Oh. 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 Nice. All kidding aside, get in touch with us, Anna. We need a token femme. <laughs> That's a pretty big burn, right? I mean, if I saw something about that related to myself or my wife, I'd be livid. Any of the women in the room experience something similar? Maybe not to this degree, but at least some form of harassment. Yes? Maybe? You may have in the way back? Kind of? Okay. I know there's another woman in the room. What about you, man? No? Okay. So, maybe, this may be just a really good example. Yeah. Actually, I've got a story with that. Um, I had a guy who sent a harassing email to, well, it was to me and a bunch of my friends. Yeah, sorry about that, dude. Huh? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Well, he sent it harassing me directly, but it was from a Hotmail account. It's so his pants. Well, he harassed not only me, but my girlfriend at the time, and it was just... It sounds like he's bi. Probably. The guy, it wasn't me. Okay, so you experienced some form of harassment. Yeah, and of course I used my skills to get even with him, but it was just the same sort of like, it's the livid feeling like you really, I mean, just that sort of crap. So you're annoying like to deal with. Okay. So there's harassment. Maybe he experienced a little bit on both ends, but primarily probably more directed at women. When we think about general yeah. harassment or sorts of objectification. Anybody ever bought the hack sewer tapes, the triple X porn film or films? If you were at DEF CON when these were released, there's you a whole lot of off. <laughs> there's a, there's a whole lot of arguments as to the quality, validity, and even well other things about the people who are involved in it. So, are there any dudes in these videos? No. Is it all women? Yeah. We don't know that. I haven't Someone watched it. Someone could be a Buffalo Bill and get on the Trump Hunter. you watched it? I haven't watched them. Oh, okay. So it's all behemoth. <laughs> so there you go. I so. watched it, but I didn't pay for it. <laughs> so yeah, you can probably burn it. Yeah. On the flip side, uh, I think sometimes a problem is, I worked in a large help desk, and there was such a problem between boys and girls, and uh, uh, men and women, whatever you want, to, however you want to say it, that th what they would do is they would have female teams and male teams. And uh, like I remember one time I got into a lot of trouble, and it was unintentional. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a woman just did that. Yeah. Herba, that looks like your wife, dude. Thanks. But my, my boss's name was, was Melanie, and I spelled it with an O just because I can't spell. Uh, yes, oh. and, and I got into a truckload of trouble, and it, I mean, a guy would have just a like quit that sometime. Trouble? What's that? Nothing. As in melons, yeah. Melanie, and also <laughs> about 20 years ago, and, and I don't think that would be, you know, something to stop, but I, I got into more trouble because I just couldn't freaking spell. It's not in the dictionary, you know, but anyhow, um, and I, also some years, like 20 years ago, uh, somebody said, give me a mouse pad, and I said, why do you have a female mouse? So I, I didn't realize there was a lady there, and she turned so red, her hands blushed, she could no longer work in that group. I didn't know she was there, but I mean, you know, it's like, it, was, it was a stupid joke, but I mean, she she blushed to where she almost passed out. See, I, I, I like to hear the boss say, and it all comes back to women being overly sensitive. See, I just like to hear the boss say, yeah, I need a mouse pad here for what's her hole? What, what, what's your name, ma'am? <laughs> All right, so, so there's stuff that happens. One way or the other. I should probably really push this along because I know there's another talk. So, what am I trying to do? Well, in the process of doing my research, I've been looking at about 10 forums, all of them publicly accessible. So I've been doing searches, I've been taking information from them, drawing down threads, examining the threads, trying to understand what is the content. And when we specifically look at it to consider gender, either regarding girls or chicks or hacksaws or what have you, less than 1% of every thread of all the posts are really dealing with gender. 
So that tells us that perhaps this is not a significant issue on the surface. However, when it does come up, what is actually going on? Who's saying what? This first example is drawn from a forum, and this is what kind of got me thinking about the whole thing. Yeah. A guy posted, how many girls did you meet who were really hackers? No one talks about it. Never seen some girl who knows a lot about computers and hacking. Is there some real reason for which girls, excuse me, is there some real, some girls which are hacking? They have very bad English. If they're spelling errors, they're not mine. These are directly from the threads. So, pardon me. This guy, Ur, said, I've only seen one girl that could be considered a hacker in an old school I used to go with. She would be in there with the geeks messing around on the router. She was hot, too. <laughs> the guy says, unfortunately, I've not met any hacker chicks. The only ones I know about exist in the movies. Then a woman comes on and says, I am a female hacker, and I know only a Just few a other female hackers. There really isn't that many that I know of. So... Somebody comes along and says, pokes and runs away. <laughs> then she says, pokes and stole, she pokes stole back. And then another guy says, I love it when kids flirt via the internet. Yeah, we just poked them both. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if, we, if we accept that this is actually a person being honest about their gender and saying, yes, I am a woman, what happens? In this context, it leads to flirt. Okay, is that really what happens all the time? Well, in another forum, somebody said, I've been looking my whole computer life for a hacker shit. They have to exist. There has to be a way I can enjoy my two favorite things. <laughs> what happens? Guy says, well, if you see girls as items in a package, I don't think you'll ever get one. Lyra is our only girl here, though I don't think she's the type for you. And then the girl actually comes on and says, it's my advice as a girl that you will never be happy if you aren't willing to compromise. What else? I know there have to be more girls on this forum somewhere. I'm going to start a poll. So this person riveted says, uh, sorry to inform you guys, but I am a chick here. A hideously tall, good-looking chick, but out of female anatomy nonetheless. I didn't really think it mattered over the internet, but hey, since you're interested. So then this poster from earlier says, we're shocked that you're claiming to be a girl. Your posting convinced us otherwise. Uh, 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 <laughs> had that You've had that happen. Okay, so what was the response? Yeah. When I started my Death Pen group, I had an email from him. He didn't know I was a chick until he met me. So there's a tacit assumption. Now he's dating me. <laughs> so there's a tacit assumption that you're dealing with a guy. How many of you in here, when you're online, assume who you are dealing with as a man, sort of by default? Hey, by the, they're either the, the other a man or the FBI. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, by the way the text is, you can kind of make an assumption. I knew this guy. By the way, they, the way they assert themselves online, the, the way they, they talk, they're... Okay, so there, there's variation. Well, intelligence okay. sometimes comes into play. It's like guys who play female characters in games. Ooh, a lot of the time, there are lots of tells yeah, that absolutely. they... Yeah, you they, can tell that they're only doing yeah. it so they get free items or something. Right, exactly. They're a chick. Yeah. Okay, so there are linguistic I cues want to that maybe with. tell us about gender. <laughs> Interesting thing to consider. I don't know how many of you have ever actually thought about that. If there are some potential ways to consider who it is that you're dealing with. Now, on the one hand, does it even matter? No. No, no not really. But when it does come up, there are odd reactions in some cases. There is some kind of an implicit, wait a minute, you're a dude? Or you're not a dude? What's going on? This kind of leads to an interesting series of posts from a different forum. Somebody was using this as their avatar. Anybody know who the penguin is? Yeah. <laughs> There's a penguin on that picture? Sorry. It's way down at the bottom. Man, look at those it's iceberg. in her cervix. <laughs> yes. uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me get this back on track. So this was somebody's avatar. This was somebody's little picture. And so somebody inevitably posts, are you on your pick? Huh? Somebody says, are you on your pick? That's in other words, is that you? <laughs> oh. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for translating that. Is that you? you? I knew what all those words meant. Independently. <laughs> yeah, they just come kind of dive together. Damn that lead speak. All right. So, somebody says, that's a relatively popular picture, and no, that's not him. <laughs> somebody else says, so what, are you a guy or a girl? I'm after the... And Both. Black comes along and says, sorry, I am a male. I know I just really like this girl on my pick, just like everybody else. Doesn't everybody? So, 
when something is up, maybe individuals may take that as a cue. If there's a girl picture, if it's kind of a femi name, maybe this is a girl. Does it change the way that they're interacting? Not necessarily, at least there's not a lot of strong evidence here. There's some flirting, there's some odd responses, but nobody is specifically flaming, oh, you're a girl, get the F out. Now, in a different thread from a different forum, a woman comes on and says, when I'm here, there's several things that bother me. There aren't that many females, and if they are, they don't make themselves known. Second, the one or two that post basically spam or just ask for opinions. I know that there are a lot of females out there who know their business and could make great contributions, and it saddens me that they don't. If you're a female, show that you know how to do more than play a game, spam, or ask opinions. Do something relevant. If you don't have any brains in your head, quit hiding them. So, very strong words from Yikes. a woman. In response, a couple of people jump on and say, there are a few women I know in real life that are very intelligent. No. <laughs> there does seem to be more truth to this, however. Most women are more concerned with emotional-based things rather than intellectual. That's why I think most geek men are avoided by mainstream women, reflecting some comments that have been made in here already. I've seen some very competent girls and some very incompetent girls. Same thing with the other sex. I don't think it really depends on the sex of the person, it's just that you've been particularly unlucky. So quality of posts is not necessarily gender specific, at least from this person's perspective. Another person says, stereotyping women into bubble-headed isn't going to help them, and don't think that you're special because you don't fit that profile. So just because you're not one of the people you're talking about, big whoop. There's a lot of very brilliant women. It's just that they choose not to post for antisocial reasons. Most women that are very good with computers choose to keep to themselves. Maybe, we don't know. This is just another person's opinion. I've never had any problems with guys in my work or online, but I guess I keep to myself and have very few male friends online. I don't go shouting, I'm a female, and write in pink. I'm often busy, too busy to chat in the forums, but I just felt I should reply to this. So this is another woman coming on and saying, hey, I don't make an issue of it. Just because I am a woman doesn't mean I, I post myself and cast myself in that image all the time. As you're always demonstrating by the girly point motion. So, all of, your report, all of Yuri's posts are always in pink. <laughs> in all caps with lots of exclamation points. Yeah. <laughs> and smiley pieces. So, that's some data from some forums. It demonstrates that something is in play, but not very often. <laughs> I've been interviewing hackers. We've got a sample of 15 people so far. The way I define hacker may be construed as being broad, but that is specifically to encapsulate both the criminal and the non-criminal hacker. The people who are interested and maybe just pen test their own systems, the people who are screwing around with their own hardware, the people who have a diversity of interests from freaking, software cracking, writing, programming, war driving, and individuals who get into systems with or without authorization. And to some extent, I do include people who post in web forums, if for no other reason than they are at the cursory edge of hacker culture and may have some insights. <laughs> so, yes, it's broad. Yes, this may not necessarily be the best definition, but when you are dealing with something that has no agreed upon definition, where there is individual variation dependent on criminal, non-criminal, I'm a black hat, I'm a white hat, I'm just a script kitty, I'm just a noob, I really suck, no, I'm a lamer, what have you. So I'm trying to come at this as broadly as possible. In the process of doing this, I have only been able to collect two interviews from women, the rest are all men. So the data that I'm going to present here are not representative of all women. This is just simply two case studies and a way to help reflect on what's going on. When we ask individuals, when I've gone to people and said, hey, when did you get an interest in computers? When did you get really involved in technology? The two women specifically got into it in their late teens, which is interesting by comparison to the men because they got in it much earlier, ages seven up to and including age 12, but there were some even as early as five and six years old. The variation in interest that really got them involved here. Women were more getting into it for the potential for communication, the ability to mud, the ability to talk to people through IRC or web forums. Men, however, were getting into it largely because of gaming, whether playing on their PC, whether trying to set up a LAN with their friends, even in some cases, for the much more nerdy of the sample, it was basic programming. So, there's some variation in terms of interest and age level. However, 
when we think about what's actually going on in terms of their friends, their social networks. Men and women both got further involved in tech and even got into hacking because of their friendship networks. The people that they know, as well as through the process of learning on their own, beginning to read online, checking out some books from the library, talking to that person they may know in a COBOL class or in a C class or in a Cisco class, depending on when you were going to school. So, that's something that men and women have in common. Also, men and women both are reporting generally low levels of friends who hack. You said earlier, how many friends do you have who are women that hack? Less than a handful? Four. Four, and how many men? I've lost count. Okay, so you have a large circle of friends who are hackers. Male. Is that a, when you think about all of your friendships, how many of those would you say are probably hackers? Related. At least 30. At least 30? 30%? 30 no, 30 of them. 30 of them. Okay, so try to put it into a percentage if you can, if you don't mind. Over 50? Oh, way over half. Okay, so you're, you're going against what so far is up here. That's great. I was an early chick in high school who got shoved in the closet all the time. Okay, so you've had some very, very different, different experience. Okay, good. So, there's more women in the room. How many of you women so far would say that more than half of your friends are hackers? How many are what? How many of the women in the room? I'm looking at 25% right now. 25%. You, ma'am. 10. 10? You in the way back? None. None? <laughs> How many of your friends are hackers? Um, for women. You need friends to have friends that are happy. Sorry about that. Okay. So, so it's a small percentage overall. Now there are some exceptions to this rule and that's true of any. But generally speaking, women and men both have a smaller percentage of their total friendship networks that involve hackers. Another commonality. Both of the women, however, have attended at least 2,600 meetings and one of them attended DEF CON regularly. Limited number of the men as well. Four of the 13 have gone to DEF CON or 2,600 meetings. So these are not necessarily huge numbers of people with large, pardon me, huge number of people with large social networks. Finally, both of the men, or pardon me, both of the women and a majority of the men, at least nine of them work in IT. So there's at least a long-term interest in technology at play for both gender. A lot of things in common. What's interesting, though, is there is one specific differential. Men have been flamed. I'm sure all of you have probably gotten into one skirmish or another via IRC. Never, or or other. ever, <laughs> ever. Anybody ever been flamed or participated in a flame? How many of you have not? What if you are the flame? <laughs> so, some of the men... The women, however, are experiencing something very unique when it comes to the flaming that they get. Some of the channels are extremely anti-female. I've been kicked off of several. Another said, guys don't respect you, and if you complain about being harassed or bothered, the general response is, what did you expect? You're a girl. And they never defend you or ask the annoying guys to shut the fuck up. So. Definitely some kind of a gendered experience. Got I got it? banned from a board for a week because I called the admin a dick because he said women don't hack an Xbox. Okay. Very, very good. Very demonstrating this whole point. I proved the admin wrong and he said, that's it, you're banned for a week. No woman will prove me wrong. Gone. Nice. Any you other you hack your PS2, did you? Did you hack your PS2? No. Did you use someone a PS2? I did. Oh, you did? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Confused you with Kerb Bob. So, there's some gender differentials here. As a consequence, the two women that were involved in the survey have concealed their gender at various points while online. One of them said, I always conceal my gender unless I'm on a channel with friends who I know won't hassle me because going online with a female Nick is asking for trouble. Another one said, I think that my Nick is somewhat feminine, which is a red flag, a red flag for later trouble. Do you ever use a gender neutral name? My handle is Late Freak. Late Freak. So there's no real gender it's, it's, at all. It's kind of neutral. Most of the handles I've neutral. used throughout the past are pretty neutral. Okay. Actually, and is that because of this or just generally speaking? Your it's just whatever came up that was 
acceptable for the occasion, and I just, at this point in time, I ended up, I'm kind of sticking with the Okay, so you oh. found a handle that you like. Yeah. Okay. You already got a name? Well, I'm a girl, and so my name is a girl's name, and screw everybody. Yeah, but you're, you, the first thing they think of is think Russian. They think of like a Russian guy. You hear that all the time. Yeah. You do hear that. So it is kind of wondering. right, but most people right away don't, don't see Yuri and think. So I, I have experienced this actually firsthand. Uh, I like really? to sometimes pretend like I'm a woman. Oh, really? Online. <laughs> I do actually <laughs> on the internet <laughs> only. What? And uh, so, so I went. I, I I did a little social experiment on my own, and I went as Alice. Everywhere for you a few me. weeks. <laughs> and, uh, I did message you actually. And, uh, <laughs> that was me. And, uh, and, and, I did, me and I did experience a lot, especially on IRC. Yeah, a lot of young boys being total, you know, stuff that I do to them. Because <laughs> turn about is fair play. Very harassing. <laughs> All right, so there you go. What's very interesting though is we move away from just the online experience when we ask. What is your definition of hacking? How do you define a hacker and a hack? There is similarity between my males and my females. Now these are just the comments from the women, but as we've seen in here so far already, there's relative parity. There are similar definitions. One of them said a hacker is someone who knows how systems work and how hierarchies and people structures work so they can find the weaknesses and the ways into protected systems that have been overlooked. Men share the similar idea. I know. Are we doing on time? I'm already over, so keep I'll press on. Oh, keep going. When we think about it, definitionally, they're the same. When it comes to attitudes concerning the legality of hacking, men and women are, again, very similar. I don't think that hacking, by my definition, should be illegal, as it's not intentionally malicious. People should be allowed to test boundaries with reasonable restrictions. Uh, yeah, totally agree. I think if you purchase something, like your example of <coughs> hacking an Xbox, you own that product, you bought that product, you might end um, your um, warranty by opening it. I don't think there should be a term of service that says you can't open this, you can't put links on this instead of our, oh, like, you yeah. can't turn your Xbox into a web server, which in my case I did. I bought it to gut it. Using something for a purpose other than I got it for right. I got and it for my real hack and had it gutted with him. And that's what a real hack, real hack is. That's why I wanted and it. And from the inception of everything that led up to this day and age, it all was people tinkering, hacking, creating things. So, and I definitely think that it's wrong. If you purchase something or you create something, you, you should be able to do what you want with it. Okay. What were we going to say? With the uh, exception of the uranium. The comment that the, the terms of service for hardware <laughs> is for when you open it up and stick the screwdriver in the wrong spot. That way they don't have to replace your fuck up. Because that costs them money. I, I hate to tell you, that's business of the person. Okay. So moving away from the business end of it for hey, a second. That's, no, that's all right. That's perfectly fine. Let's push away from that for a second. So if they share similar ideas about the legality of it, what about malicious hacking? Again, very, very similar. One said, I think whether or not it's wrong depends on who it hurts and how hard the damage is to fix and how many people are being inconvenienced by it. I totally agree with that. Why is it wrong for the general public to pen test on their own or whatever, but yet governments can legally take out another network, other people's uh, internet, things like that. That's legal. But yet when a general populace does it, that's illegal. Oh, if it's illegal for one, it's illegal for all. No, but it's true. Yeah. Because the government has its own hackers to be used for whatever. There I go. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no the point you're raising, I mean, one of them went very much on that tear and was talking about how it's unfair that our government prosecuting domestic hackers when the problem's coming abroad. We're unfairly exactly. focusing on our country's problem versus those from others because there is illegal hacking on both ends. Or, when our country, and they have gone overseas to prosecute foreign hackers, it may not be a crime where they are, but because it's a crime here, there's no jurisdiction over that, and I think that's wrong as well. Okay. Yes? It's kind of with that. Um, you know, life sucks. It's kind of like that phrase, you know. Life sucks, deal with it. I mean, no matter where you go, what you do, you will be controlled. Somebody will have more power, somebody will be better, somebody have a car that drives faster, you just got to deal with it. Governments will do what they want when they want. That's and true. then they will make laws afterwards if they need to. That's Show very true. Up. Yeah, go ahead. What is what is your observations as far as, is this an American culture thing or what's going on in other parts of the world? Can somebody put that back up sure. on display for me? 
So what's that going, what is it saying about general? No, I'm saying what are your observations as far as, because um, you can't use the internet and treat it as a global community, because we're really not the global community yet. We're still cultures <laughs> who meet on the internet. That's so a good question. Lack of women in, in computer sciences, is that an American culture, or is that, how good is, question. what are the observations in other countries? Excellent one. And honestly, I, I can't speak to that. There has been very little looking at it internationally. I don't have a, an international sample to speak of. I can only talk about what I've collected thus far. And so to speculate any further would be really bad on my part. The only thing that I can say is that uh, the, there's one guy that I know of who's looking at it in Russia, and he hasn't really hit on that yet, that gender issue. So it may be present, but I really don't know the extant literature enough to, to speak to it. Yes, sir. Is it even important to look at a gender disparity in, in technology? Because that, to me, almost seems like looking at do more short, short people jog than tall people? What does it matter? What relevance does it have? Or is it just Americans are obsessed with equality, and we're obsessed with differences between us? And we look for that everywhere. Are there more women in art? Are there more gay people in this? Or are See, there more white people yeah. in the sky? No, I believe I, I, I that exactly. Concur with them exactly. If we spent less time counting Cheerios in the other bowl and more time figuring out if the, if we even want Cheerios in the fucking first place, we'd be in a lot better position. Now, now exactly. the real disparity is how come we care about technology and other people don't, but technology is in our lives. Yeah. That's the real disparity. Yeah. Now, I can tell you exactly why I have gotten into this line of research. Well, you know, it's a very specific reason. Yeah. 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 Ye
As a whole, men and women have some similar experiences. Men and women define <laughs> hacker culture in some similar ways. The definition of hack, beliefs about hacking, okay, there's, there's some real parity there. Okay, great. Then yeah, what's the point? If they do share similar ideas, why bother looking at it? Because there is some variation in how they get involved, there's some variation in actual experience. Now with two women, I can't say that, oh yes, this is representative of every single one. I can't say that every single female hacker has experienced gender harassment online, and so, but still it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect their view. There may be some women out there who say, I am so pissed off and fed up with the way that people treat me online, screw hackers, I'm done with this crap. Maybe, maybe, you're right, I don't know. So you said that the, the women who are at least into hacking share the same point of view. Have you done any, any research on whether women in general, uh, as opposed to men, share the same view on, on hacking or, or things like that to see whether there's some predisposition before you know they're, they're involved in it? Or... To be honest with you, no. Um, and most of the research that's out there even on hacking doesn't take this tack. There's, um, these two researchers, Jordan and Taylor, they've tried to at least say, yes, we look at female hackers. Their discussion about female hacking, though, is extremely esoteric. Doesn't highlight their actual experience or opinions, but just says these very high-minded things about hacking turning into hacktivism, and so as a result, we're going to see more women involved in hacking because hacktivism is more female gender oriented. Confusing stuff that doesn't really add up. So I I can't really answer your question, unfortunately. I'm interested in in things like you know like engineering and mathematics and science. I mean, you know, there's a technical field. Is, is there some difference, you know, in, in the way the female brain approaches these? Why they're less interested, or you know, are they less interested? Are they you know, less able? Are they more able? Are they just not given a chance? Um, have you ever looked at any parallels between that sort of research and what you're doing? What I've seen is uh, just at a, at a hard numbers level in terms of, say, engineering and mathematics. The number of women involved, at least at the college level, has increased. We haven't seen that concurrent increase in IT. So that may indicate something about some difference. Uh, in terms of women and getting involved in computer science and IT, there's research that's beginning to question it. Stanford did a study a couple of years ago, and there's a great quote about it. Uh, and why is it that there's this increase in these other fields, but not in this specific discipline? There's growing research. I just know a, a few things about it off, off the top of my head. And it doesn't necessarily tell us too much about hacking. So, I'm sorry, I don't have a real good answer for you. Okay. So, let me just kind of wrap this up here. There's yes. clear demonstrations of harassment, but it's at a very low level. What are you going to ask? Okay. Parallels to this, you 